everyone, welcome back. I am really excited for this video because this is going to be the first video in a video series that I have planned. This series is going to be talking about graduate school applications. I'm going to talk to you about my experience with applications and walk you through the different parts of my PhD application so you can get an idea of what to expect and get some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my personal experience applying for graduate school. I've gone through the process twice now, once for my master's program and once for my PhD program because they were two completely different programs. And when I started out, I there was a lot of information and it could be really overwhelming. So I just want to say if you are sitting there watching this and you are feeling overwhelmed but really feeling like you want to apply but you're having those doubts, you can do it. You can be successful. Um, I am not by any stretch of the imagination the typical graduate student. I know it's much more common to go from undergrad to straight to grad or to take just one gap year or something like that. That has not been my path or my experience, but Taking a chance on myself was the best thing that I ever did for myself. Um, when I began this journey, I knew nothing about applying for graduate school. I didn't have really any resources to help me out. I had been out of undergrad for four years, so those um, resources of undergrad were not available to me anymore. And Honestly, the gap of four years, I was a little concerned would affect my application because I hadn't been working in the industry I've been, I was going to apply for, but I decided to take the chance on myself and I didn't let that stop me from applying. And there were, there were definitely times where I was thinking, what the heck are you doing? Why are you doing this? You are never going to get in. And all those other negative self-doubt thoughts that we just need to kick out of our brain sometimes, especially to know that this is what you want. This is my passion. And I was able to tell myself, no, this is what you want. You can do it. And I ended up going through with the process. Applying for my master's degree was a lot different than applying for my PhD program. This is just by nature of the programs and what they're trying to prepare you for also. Um, so what they're looking for in applic applicants is different. My master's is in forensic science and the program was heavily focused on preparing students to work in industry. They were looking for high quality academic students. So they did have a requirement that you had a certain undergraduate degree in a certain field, um, mainly the fields of chemistry and biology in the various field surrounding that because that's what the program focused on and also that you maintained a specific undergraduate degree of a 3.0 or higher. These are helped to help them see that you are a good academic candidate to complete your studies and to complete the program successfully. I was very fortunate that I was a good undergraduate student. I did maintain higher than a 3.0 GPA. I had my undergrad degree in biomedical sciences. So I met all those requirements and I felt good about my application that way. Um, luckily, the program did not require letters of recommendation or that I take the GRE. Those were two things that having been out of academia for a number of years, I was not looking forward to having to supply. Um, my professors probably didn't remember me from undergrad. I hadn't really kept in contact with any of them or anything like that. And I didn't want to spend $200 to take the GRE, which is the standardized graduate test that you take. So not having to do either of those was a bonus for me to getting into a master's program. So the application process for my master's ended up being not as complicated as I thought it was going to be upon first researching. And that was great. Side note, if you are looking to go to a master's program that is going to be preparing you for industry, 
check to make sure if the program or the industry rather has an accreditation standard that they look for in graduates. In forensic science, there is an accreditation board called BPAC, which stands for Forensic Science Education Programs Accreditation Commission. And that just means that the program has been accredited, that it prepares its students properly to enter the workforce, and it gives its students all the tools and skills that it's going to need. But this accreditation can be really important for when you go to apply for jobs. If your school didn't have the accreditation, it can make it very difficult to find a job, especially in industries that are very um, intense and competitive. So please make sure to take note of that. Good news, I got into the forensic science program that I really wanted to attend for my master's and getting into a master's program was a huge confidence boost for somebody who didn't think that I could do it. It really showed me that I could do it and I didn't have to do it the same way everyone else was doing it to be successful. Sometimes I think that we get tricked into thinking you have to do it the same as everybody else or it's not going to work and that's just not true. It happens that you don't do it the same. And if you're watching this and you are thinking about wanting to apply to graduate school in the future, I want you to know you can do it. And I also want you to know that you should prepare yourself now to become a better applicant in the future. There are steps that you can take um, no matter what stage in life you're at to prepare yourself for that and to make yourself a better applicant. So if you see it in your future, prepare yourself now. My experience has been a great example of not following a straight line and kind of taking a stepping stone since I got my master's degree and now this fall I'm preparing to enter my PhD program. For me, um, I never would have been confident enough to apply for my PhD back when I applied for my master's program. I did consider it a little bit when I started looking at graduate school, but I knew I wasn't going to be a strong applicant. I didn't have the things that they were looking for in applicants, and I wasn't sure 100% what I wanted to be doing. Thankfully, life had other plans and I found forensic science. And this led me to my master's degree because through that forensic science master's degree, I found my passion. I fell in love with research, which is what propelled me on to my PhD because I want to continue to do that research. And I also proved to myself that I could do it. I wasn't really sure, but I proved that I can go to graduate school. I can be successful in graduate school and now I can go get my PhD. My experience with my master's degree really helped me become a strong PhD applicant. I was able to complete my master's degree with a 4.0 GPA, I did an independent research project, and I was able to do an internship, which are all pieces of a puzzle that helped me build a strong PhD application. And they also helped me grow more within myself and develop more and find out more of what my passions are. And my PhD application process was a lot more intense than my master's application process. I had a lot more parts. I had to do three letters of recommendation. I had to take the GRE. I submitted statement of purpose or personal statements depending on the application. I also had an academic CV I had to submit. And then finally, I did an interview for one of my programs. Those five parts are the five parts that I'm going to break down in the rest of this video series to talk about in more detail with you. Everything that I talk about and all the advice I give, it's not universal. Some things are going to work for you. Some things are not. Take everything you learn and use it if you can. Share it if you can. Finally, I want to say that if you're an undergraduate student who is dreaming of going to grad school right now, amazing. You can do it. Please prepare yourself. Take those steps you need to make yourself a good applicant if you know that's what you want to do. If you 
are in the workforce right now and you are dreaming of going back to graduate school, you can do it too. There is nothing that should be stopping you or at least very little that should be stopping you. Uh, but also take those steps that you can to prepare yourself for graduate school if that's your dream. If you have been out of school for a number of years and you're concerned and a little bit worried about going back to school, you can do it. You may have to prepare yourself differently than another person, but that is okay. And if you are a parent who wants to go back to school and you are dreaming about it, but you're not sure you can do it, you can do it. I am a mom. I have had my own struggles with that, but I have been able to be successful and still have that work-life balance that you need. And honestly, I would love to see more people pursuing their passions. I would love to see more people when they discover what their passions are, no matter what stage of life that they're in, that they choose to really go after those passions and pursue them. Uh, there's very little that I believe should stop us from pursuing our passions. And there's never a better time than now to start trying, to start planning, to start doing. So please go do. I hope that this helped you. I hope that you will subscribe so you can see the rest of this series to learn how I made my application and how you can make your application stronger. And until next time, see you later.